About fifteen years ago, in the dead of winter, I set out on a week-long section hike of the Appalachian Trail. The crisp February air bit at my skin as I trudged along, each breath forming a frosty cloud in front of me. By the time the sun was setting, I was exhausted and ready to rest at Quarry Gap Shelter in Pennsylvania. When I arrived I noticed a tall, disheveled man lingering near the shelter. His presence immediately put me on edge. As I set up my sleeping bag, he started talking. His voice was shaky and filled with an unsettling fervor. He rambled about the NSA watching him, how his brother had stabbed him with an ice pick, and bizarre conspiracies about cameras in the woods reading his thoughts. His questions came rapid fire. Did I believe in God? Did I think the government was after him? Every word he spoke sent a chill down my spine, and it became clear that I couldn't stay there. I made up my mind to push on another seven miles to the Rocky Mountain Shelter, despite the impending darkness. As I packed up my gear, the man announced he would come with me. His constant chatter followed me as we plunged into the night, his babbling and eerie soundtrack to our hike. The trail was difficult to navigate in the dark, the only light coming from my headlamp and the occasional glimmer of moonlight through the trees. Each step felt heavier than the last, the man's presence a constant source of anxiety. His nonsensical talk never ceased, and I began to seriously consider whether I might have to defend myself. The thought of having to hit him with a rock and leave him behind in Caledonia State Park crossed my mind more than once. We finally reached Route 30, and I saw my chance to rid myself of his unsettling company. I stopped and pulled out ten dollars, handing it to him. I told him he should go into town because there were special agents in the woods, possibly looking for him. He stared at me for a moment, then nodded and started walking down the road. I watched him until he disappeared into the distance, a strange mix of relief and fear washing over me. With the man gone, I doubled my pace to Rocky Mountain Shelter, my nerves still on edge. When I finally arrived, I was too tense to fully relax. I set up my sleeping bag and lay down, my headlamp within arm's reach. Every rustle of leaves or snap of a twig outside the shelter jolted me awake. Sleep came in fits and starts, my mind replaying the bizarre encounter over and over. Morning finally broke bringing with it a sense of relief. The sun's rays felt warm and reassuring as they filtered through the trees. I packed up my gear, still feeling the weight of the night before. As I set off on the trail again, I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched, a lingering unease that stayed with me for the rest of the hike. That week on the Appalachian Trail was one of the most intense experiences of my life. The encounter with the strange man reminded me of the unpredictable nature of the wilderness and the people you might meet there. It's a story I still think about, especially when I'm out on the trail alone. And every time, I remember to stay cautious, always aware of my surroundings, because you never know who or what you might run into. During my through hike, I had planned to get off the trail around Waynesboro, Virginia for a wedding in Shenandoah. I had a friend hike with me for five days out of Damascus, doing fifteen mile days, then I picked up the pace to make it in time. I needed to average about twenty-three miles per day for around twelve days. I started with twenty-nine and twenty-eight mile days and averaged twenty-three for a four-day push to Purisburg. Then I needed to repeat that to Daleville, but I slowed up and got there a day late. It was shortly after that I found out the wedding was a day earlier than I had thought, so I was two days behind. I decided to get off at Buena Vista instead, which I had not wanted to do since I had stopped there during a section hike before. So cut to Friday, the day before the wedding. I hiked into Glasgow for lunch, pizza, and a small resupply to get me through the night. I packed out half the pizza and began the big uphill in the heat of the day. I chugged all my water by the top of the mountain, where I had decided to camp, so I needed to hike on to the next shelter, Punchbowl. I had signal for what would be the last time, so I decided to book my rental car from Enterprise and request a pickup from the road where the trail comes out. Declined. I had to pick a time when the store was open. 
I checked the hours and saw they closed at noon on Saturdays. Well, crap. I texted my girlfriend the situation and began to hike downhill, losing signal. I made it to Punchbowl and ran down with just my bottle and filter for water. I didn't bring my headlamp and it was getting dark quickly. I ran back up the trail and got to my pack, took out my headlamp, and kept hiking into the night. I only did maybe three miles and then had to look for a stealth spot to camp. I finally found a small flat spot barely big enough for my tent right off the trail by about two feet. I threw up my tent and wasn't even hungry from dehydration. I went to hang my food, smelly pizza included, from a tree but looked for a suitable limb for like ten minutes with no luck. Eventually, I said, yeah, f it, and threw my food onto a tiny branch about eight feet off the ground, in the tree right across the trail from my tent, maybe ten feet out my front door. I went to sleep and woke up at 4 a.m. to large footsteps behind my tent. Probably not human because it was coming from the woods, not the trail. I shuffled my sleeping pad to scare it off. It just froze for a second, then kept wandering closer. All the deer I had seen were super skittish, and this creature was not, so I assumed it was a bear. I made as much noise as possible, and it detoured a wide berth around the side of my tent. I played some music from my phone while packing up loudly. The music ended and I heard nothing. I peeked out. Nothing. I packed up my tent while singing loudly, grabbed my food bag, and hiked off down the trail. I never ended up eating that pizza either. The rest of the hike to Buena Vista was a blur. My mind kept replaying the encounter with whatever was outside my tent. I finally reached the road and managed to hitch a ride into town. Sitting in the rental car office, waiting for my girlfriend, I felt a mix of relief and exhaustion. The wild, unpredictable nature of the trail had shown itself once again, reminding me of the thin line between adventure and danger. The wedding might have been the catalyst for my rush, but the real story was out there in the woods, where every sound and shadow held a potential threat. As I sipped on a much-needed coffee, I knew I would be back on the trail soon enough, but with a heightened sense of respect and caution for the wilderness and its inhabitants. The first couple of bears I saw on the trail ran away as soon as they noticed me, just like you'd expect a bear to do. But when I got to Shenandoah, the bears were different. They were so used to people that they didn't really run. They would just saunter off a short distance, sit down, and watch you pass. They always seemed to go just far enough that you couldn't get a good picture. One morning, heading into Skyland, I was trying to make it to the breakfast buffet. I saw a bear not far from the stables. When I passed, this bear didn't go as far as the others had. Being a moron, my first thought was maybe I could get a picture. So I stopped, turned around and reached up into my lid to get my camera. The bear must have interpreted something about my actions as a threat. It stomped one foot and then came toward me with a couple of quick steps. Everything they tell you about looking big and standing your ground against a bluff charge went right out of my head. I shrank down small, turned away, and walked down the trail without running or looking back. I would like to tell you that I made a reasoned decision to appear non-threatening but there was no thought process. Right or wrong on my part, the bear must have been more bluff than charge, because I managed to walk away. Any thoughts of hitting the breakfast buffet evaporated. I walked into the lodge lobby, feeling shaken. I sat down, nursed a cup of coffee, and tried to collect myself. The adrenaline slowly faded, replaced by a sense of relief and a tinge of embarrassment at my own stupidity. Reflecting on the incident, I realized just how quickly a seemingly mundane situation could turn dangerous. The Shenandoah bears might have been used to people, but they were still wild animals with unpredictable reactions. I had been lucky. As I finished my coffee, I resolved to be more cautious and respectful of the wildlife I encountered. I never did get that picture, but the memory of that bear's charge is seared into my mind. It's a vivid reminder of the power and unpredictability of nature 
and of the respected demands. I was hiking in New York and made it to this awesome deli, the Appalachian Market, just in time for dinner. The rain was pouring down, so I took refuge inside, enjoying a delicious meal while waiting for the storm to pass. The food was so good that I decided to stealth camp nearby, thinking about an early start fueled by a New York breakfast sandwich and coffee. I crossed the road and found a flat spot to set up my tent. Nearby, I noticed a makeshift camp with a hammock and a bunch of stuff scattered around. It looked like a homeless person set up. I decided to keep going and found another flat spot a bit further down the trail. A few hours later, I was jolted awake by a bright light. Someone was outside my tent, shining a flashlight or headlamp all around. I heard footsteps, and my heart raced. Who would shine a light on someone's tent at midnight? It couldn't be another through hiker, could it? Then I heard a man's voice, angry and slurred. Motherfucker! Motherfucker! Whoever it was sounded both furious and unhinged. What did he want? I held my breath, hoping he would think I was asleep and leave. The footsteps stopped, and the light shone directly on my tent. Motherfucker! What the fuck? The voice grumbled more incoherent curses. I debated whether to yell and try to scare him away or make a run for it. I had no idea if he had a knife or some other weapon. So I sat still, praying he would go away. After what felt like an eternity, the footsteps finally moved away, and the light disappeared. I exhaled slowly, my body still tense. He was gone, but I couldn't shake the fear that he might return. I fell asleep for a little while, but woke up again feeling uneasy. I turned and looked out through the half-unzipped rain fly of my tent. My blood ran cold. Standing just outside was a man in a red raincoat with a gray beard, staring directly at me. He was completely silent, just staring. I reached for my knife, but then realized I didn't have one. I blinked, and when I looked again, he was gone. Was it a dream? The next morning, after barely sleeping, I packed up and walked back to the deli, eager for some comfort and safety. As I made my way down the trail, I saw a man passed out in a sleeping bag. He was wearing a red raincoat. My stomach churned. It was the same man I had seen in the night. I didn't stop to investigate. I hurried past him, my mind racing. The night's events replayed in my head, the fear and confusion still fresh. The man in the red raincoat was real, and he had been right outside my tent. I reached the deli, grateful for the light and warmth. As I sipped my coffee and bit into my breakfast sandwich, I couldn't shake the feeling of unease. The memory of his silent stare stayed with me long after I left the deli and continued on my hike. The most scared I've ever been on the trail was when my hiking partner and I arrived at a shelter late one evening. As we approached, the faint sound of a voice carried through the trees, growing louder and more fervent. We entered the clearing and saw a man pacing back and forth, his eyes wild and intense. He immediately fixed his gaze on us and started spewing tales of fire, brimstone, and biblical judgment. His words were disjointed, full of apocalyptic warnings and threats of eternal damnation. It quickly became clear that this guy was in the midst of a full-on psychotic break. His presence was unsettling, his energy frantic and unpredictable. We had planned to stay at the shelter, but there was no way we were spending the night with this guy. The idea of trying to sleep with him around was terrifying. We hastily packed up our gear, trying to be as inconspicuous as possible, and set off down the trail. The sun was already dipping below the horizon, casting long shadows through the forest. Every crack of a twig or rustle of leaves seemed amplified in the growing darkness. We pushed ourselves hard, trying to put as much distance as we could between us and the shelter before nightfall. Eventually, the darkness became too thick to navigate safely, and we found a spot to set up camp. My heart was still pounding from the encounter 
and it took a long time for me to settle down enough to sleep. The man's crazed eyes and fervent words echoed in my mind, making it hard to relax. The next day, we continued on, eager to put more miles between us and the unsettling encounter. But the trail had more surprises in store. A few days later, we arrived at Uncle Johnny's, a popular stop for hikers. The place was buzzing with activity, and as we approached, we saw a commotion near the trailhead. A cop was there, his gun drawn and pointed at a man who was clearly out of his mind. The fugitive was yelling incoherently, his movements erratic. Nearby, another hiker was tripping hard on shrooms, caught up in the chaos. The scene was surreal and deeply sad. We learned that the hiker had started the trail sober, using the journey as a way to get clean. But somewhere along the way, he had fallen off the wagon and was now lost in a haze of drugs and alcohol. Seeing the cop with his gun drawn, and the desperate, lost look in the hiker's eyes, was a stark reminder of how quickly things can spiral out of control. The wilderness can be a place of healing and escape, but it can also amplify vulnerabilities and bring out the worst in people. We left Uncle Johnny's with heavy hearts, the weight of those experiences lingering. The trail is full of beauty and wonder, but it also holds its share of darkness and danger. I learned to be more cautious, more aware of the people around me, and to never take safety for granted. Those encounters stayed with me, a reminder of the thin line between adventure and peril.